Hello everyone! So, kami yung group 6 and ang ire-report namin is yung sa Introduction to Philosophical Analysis ni John Hospers. Yung first part, dito yung truth. So, kapag may sinabi tayong something and that something is talaga nage-exist siya sa mundo, that means na yung statement na yun is true. And a true statement is one that states a fact. Pero kasi yung yung term na fact, it's ambiguous or vague or medyo broad yung sakop niya. So, sometimes it means true statement, sometimes it means state of affairs in the world which the statement expresses. And yung kasabihan na a true statement is one that expresses a fact is equal or the same as a true statement is one that asserts the existence of some actual state of affairs or any or any fact about the world. So, how do we discover if a statement is true? We discover the truth of different statements in different ways, but Hospers did not explain in chapter 1 kung ano yung mga yun. Sabi niya, i-explain niya sa next chapters, kaso kasi yung chapter 1 lang meron kami. So, ayun. I just wanted to share na ayun nga, madaming ways para malaman. So, dito tayo sa statement. A statement is either the proposition expressed or the sentence expressing it. So, yung sentence and proposition, interconnected sila. Yung sentence, ito yung may subject, predicate, direct object, um, object of the preposition, and others. Pero, may meaning siya, yung sentence. And yung meaning na yun is yung preposition. Ang preposition ay pwede maklasify into true or false. And if marami yung propositions mo, nag ng variables. Tulad kapag uh, yung sa first proposition mo, P sa second, Q sa third, R, at iba pa. So, dito naman, two or more sentences can be used to express the same proposition that is the same meaning. So, example, yung first sentence, Isabella is larger than Benguet. The second sentence, Benguet is smaller than Isabella. Pareho lang yung meaning nila, di ba? Pero nagkaiba sila sa structure and yung ginamit na adjectives and yung ah, uh, yung sa number one, ang adjective na ginamit is larger. Sa number two, smaller. Tapos yung first and last words sa number one, binaligtad siya sila sa number 2. They're different, but they provide the same information. If you believe that number 1 is true, then you should also believe that number 2 is true. If someone said na bibigyan ka niya ng dalawang pirasong information, pero ang binigay niya lang is yung, katulad sa example na, Isabella is larger than Benguet, and Benguet is smaller than Isabella. Pag sinabi niya yun sa'yo, sabihin natin na, hindi yung dalawa scenes. Isa lang yun. On the other hand, may reverse yung ganon. Ito yung the same or one sentence can be used to express different propo different propositions when the sentence is ambiguous. Example, yung nahulog ako. So, it can mean na yung speaker is nahulog sa hagdan or nahulog sa kama, but it can also mean na nahulog ka romantically sa kachat mo, ganon. You know what I'm saying? So, two different meanings, but one sentence. Ang kinaklasify as true or false is yung proposition, hindi yung sentence itself. Sadyang nasa loob lang ng sentence yung proposition. And kung alam natin yung meaning ng sentence, malalaman natin kung yung ina-express ng proposition e true or false. So, dahil napakaraming tanong na nag arise kapag pinag-uusapan yung propositions, dumating sa point na yung mga estudyante, hindi na nila ginagamit yung term na propositions, but instead, they use na, uh, they just use sentences. And, next is, dito. So, yung philosophers, may pake sila sa sentences, kung yung sentences na yun ay carriers of meaning, kung may meaning. 
And sabi nila, in order to state propositions, we must use sentences. Next. So, ito naman yung linguists, philologists, etymologists, and etc. They are concerned with the analysis of sentences and the words they contain, together with their history, origin, and relations. We shall have occasion to use the technical term proposition quite often in our inquiry. Sometimes we shall employ the more usual word statement, which can mean either the proposition expressed or the sentence expressing it. In many cases, it is clear from the context which of these is meant, but in many, but in many cases, the distinction is important to avoid confusion. And then we shall employ the more precise language of sentences and propositions. Sometimes the meaning is quite clear to most readers, even though the sentences designed to express them are ungrammatical or magulo. Dito sa part nito, sa so totoo lang, nagugulo na ko medyo. Kasi sabi ni Hospers, dapat daw gamitin natin yung term na propositions. Pero sabi niya din sa next sentence, gamitin daw natin yung word na statement. Statement as in proposition or sentence. Di ko alam kung anong term yung mas pinapagamit niya kung propositions ba or statement. I don't know. Medyo magulo. Okay, so dito naman, next is meaningless sentences. So, ang sentence is either true or false or meaningless. If meaningless na siya, di na siya pwede i-classify as true or false. Ang meaningless sentences ay walang proposition and, ayun nga, walang meaning, kaya nga meaningless. Example is, he stood between the post. Nakatayo siya sa gitna ng poste. It doesn't make sense, di ba? Maliba na lang kung yung taong yun ay sobrang payat, sobrang nipis, nakasya siya dun sa poste. And para hindi na siya maging meaningless, pwede palitan yung sentence into he stood between the post and a trash can. Ganon. Next one is category mistakes. So, ito yung one of the main reasons for a sentence to be meaningless. Ito yung sentences na maayos naman yung structure ng sentence na iintindihan siya kahit pa paano. Pero, meaningless siya kasi mali yung category nung something na ginamit dun sa sentence. Sabi, it is meaningful to ascribe a characteristic to something to something in a given category only if the characteristic also belongs in that category. Example, yung lasang putok and amoy maanghang. Yung lasang putok, usually sinasabi natin to, or ako lang, kapag gumakain ako ng tacos, Tapos, mas madami yung sibuyas. Paano ko ba nasabing lasang putok? Natikman ko na ba yung putok ko? Secret charot. And yung sa amoy maanghang, di naman posible yun, di ba? Kasi sa panlasa lang naman nare-recognize yung anghang. And nasasabi ko to kapag madaming sili yung toyo ng sausawan. Tapos, durog na durog yung sili. Ayun, maang, amoy maanghang siya. Pero, ano siya? Category mistake. Last, ay na, hindi siya last. Next is self-contradic- self-contradictoriness. A statement that contradicts its own self. Sa totoo lang, ang gulo ulit ni Hospers sa part na to, kasi di niya nilinaw kung ano nga ba yung self-contradictory statements, kung false ba or meaningless. Pero base dun sa pagkakaintindi ko, yung dalawang yun lang yung choices niya. Example dito yung he drew a square circle. So, sabi raw ng iba, self-contradictory statements are false. Alam nila yung ibig sabihin ng square circle, and because they know what it means to say this, they know that it's self-contradictory. There are no square circles, diba? Like, wala namang gana. Therefore, the statement is false. Pero hindi siya meaningless. Pero sabi daw ng iba, I mean, Others might reply to that na totoo na may meaning yung individual words na square at circle. But that but that doesn't mean na kapag pinang-combine mo sila, may meaning na. So, parang sa second part na to, sinasabi na hindi porket may meaning yung individual words, may meaning na kapag 
pinagsama. So, parang meaningless daw. I think. So, next part is yung concepts, which will be discussed by Noriel.